Houston Rockets, 16 and 8, fourth seed in the West. That's not bad. This is what I expected 50 some odd wins, but James Harden, Rob, is just putting on an absolute show. 55 points again uh, last night. And he now has like four 50 point games this season. He's got 10 40 point games this season. And we all know he's leading the league with 38.7 points a game. That's almost eight points higher than Giannis, who's viewed by most, including myself, as the front runner for the MVP. Uh, ESPN did a, an, a nice feature recently about Harden, and they said he's the greatest scorer that the NBA has seen since Michael Jordan. Uh, I like Harden a lot. I think he is an all-time great. I think he will be somewhat iconic with these huge scoring numbers he's put up. But I also think there are other guys, Rob, that if in that type of system that Mike D'Antoni has, if given the just straight-up green light, I don't even mean given it, but if they just took it, if Kevin Durant shot as much as James Harden, he could do this. I mean, I, he's a better scorer. He's more efficient from two. He's more efficient from three. He just doesn't shoot as much as James Harden. And he's unstoppable. He's seven foot. He can take you off the bounce. He can shoot the three. He can hit the mid-range jumper. He can post. What can he do? So I have a hard time, as much as I like Harden, saying he's a better scorer than a Kevin Durant. No, I'm with you on that. I agree with you. And I get it. We've seen James Harden and what he's been able to do. The same old move for the most part, Chris, over and it's, over. It's, I, I, it's right? fascinating. It, right? It's, that, it's that unbelievable you can't figure it out. that yeah. you can't figure it like Kareem with the hook shot. Yep. I understand that, why people couldn't get it. You know what I mean? But but this is incredible uh, to me what Harden has been able to do. It, it really has been. We I was – as you know, co-hosting First Things First for much of this week. And today, Nick Wright, we talked about it. He threw he threw a curveball. And we weren't, you know, we were going to talk about James Harden. And he saved this for one of the later segments. Mm -hmm. But it was really interesting. He threw out there that he thinks James Harden is the best player ever not to win a ring. And I pushed back a little. I mean, I brought up Charles Barkley. Who was a I hell of a player? I think awesome. sometimes, sometimes I think people just don't realize it. Or oh, you know what I mean? The people didn't see him play during his day, Chris. He right. was a great player. I've said it, Rob. Inch for inch, we we usually hear pound for pound. We don't right. think inch for inch, but inch for inch, you could make a strong argument as to you know whether or not anybody's been better than him. Right. I mean, he was a six foot four power forward. Yes. Not only giving you 25, 26, sometimes 28 points a game, but leading the league in rebounds, 13, 14, 15 rebounds a night, was a good passer, you know, developed a, a, a pretty good jump shot. He was unstoppable, and he led Phoenix to the NBA Finals, something Harden has not been able to do. And, and Nick and I were talking, and he, you know, said Harden had to go through Kevin Durant and Steph and all that, and I get that. But Barkley, I mean, when he went to the Western Conference Finals, they had Akeem Olajuwon. They had David Robinson. They had Sean Kemp and Gary Payton all in the West. Nope. They had Stockton and Malone in the West. And that's another one I could throw out, Carl Malone. So, Carl, right, they had two, was a really they, good defender, they had too. two great players on that yep. team, Hall of Famers, and they won a ton of games and were in the mix, Chris, year after year yep. after year. So I, I think Harden could, if he continues this and doesn't win a championship, I think he could end up being what Nick Wright said. But I'm not ready to give him that yet. Yeah, I I still I still would say it's Barkley uh, more so, um, and I don't know. I, I the the one problem I have, and I don't know how this really affects it, is. Is his style of play, Chris, conducive to winning? Where I don't, I can't really say, and I'm not saying Barkley was the greatest defender of all time, right? But I don't think he hurt his team at all. Do you know what I mean with this with his style of play? Does that, does that no? Make that's sense? a good point. And and here's what I think, kind of what you're saying, just to add on to it. 
James Harden's averaging 38, basically 39 points a game. No one, Rob, in the history of basketball, not Will, not Michael Jordan, not Kareem, we could go on and on. No one has averaged even 33 points a game in the regular season and led a team to the championship that year. The most the guys ever averaged in leading a team to a title was Michael Jordan at 32 and a half points a game. And he had years, that was like his fourth highest scoring year of his career. But when he averaged 37 and 35, he didn't get to the finals. What does that or say? Or That's it, what much does. less winning. Yeah, you got to get, it's a team game. I mean, we got great individual players, but you've got to get other guys involved. And to your point about Harden, here's the interesting thing. It's not like he's on a team where he's got to do this. You know what I mean? Like, you got Russell Westbrook. You got Eric Gordon, Clint Capella, P.J. Tucker who can hit the corner three. Like, you have other guys. You had Chris Paul, and that was kind of their beef. Paul was, like, willing to give up his game for Harden to try to win a title. When it didn't happen in two years, Chris was like, okay, we got to get a little more, you know, ball movement and, and utilizing me a little bit more. And Harden did not change his game for Chris. And he has not changed his game one iota for his good friend, Russell Westbrook. Which I'm not surprised. I never thought it was going to happen. I know people were were thinking maybe it would be a different scenario. I didn't think it would be. Yeah, and and that kind of speaks to what you're saying. And, look, I think Harden wants to win, but I also think you got to look at it and say, you know, let's get some other guys involved. I mean, he still could average 32, 34, but – I just think they're a one-man show, and I don't think they need to be, and I think it's going to be very tough to win a title that way. Could James Harden become the greatest NBA player to never win a ring? And can you win with his style of play? 39 points again, heavy ISO, kind of one guy doing it all. Let's start with Marty in Kentucky. Marty, you're on the Odd Couple, Fox Sports Radio. What's up? What's up, fellas? We're talking the Houston Rockets and uh, the team that I love to dog on, so I'm going to get right at it. <laughs> um, James Harden, I will say one positive thing, is the most innovative scorer I've seen since Michael Jordan. The way he developed his drop back and kept it within the rules was, was very smart. He's a smart guy, and the way he he has that. He he knows he's got that first step, and he's got real strong upper body strength. And that chicken wing that he puts on people after he gets yep. a step on them is is phenomenal. And the things that he's done offensively show that he's very smart and very hardworking on that side of the ball. Now defensively, we all know he's never had that kind of effort. That was the core of the problem with him and Chris Paul. And the worst coach, the most overrated coach, in my opinion, in history, Dan Tony, has allowed him to play this way. And the way this, the one reason I think this doesn't win ball games is because when you just ISO, 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 most of the team you're playing is getting a rest. And at the end of the game, they got legs and you don't. That's a good point. A, yep. That's a, a really good point, matters, Marty. That's a good point. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. That is a great point. It really and is. I, I, I said today early on the TV show, Rob, mm. uh, first things first, that guarding a Steph Curry where he's running around constantly and you got to chase him and, and go over screens and all that, that can be more a lot where, where you out a lot more than just guarding James Harden, even though you can't stop Harden. But he's in one spot for the most part. It used you know to be the same when Reggie Miller, remember that? Just run right. around like right. drive you crazy. You, yep. You're burnt out trying no to doubt. keep up with them. Jody in Atlanta. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What you got, Jody? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing What's great. Uh, like Rob always says, no way, no how. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you got to have the bones and you got to have the structure. He's a really <laughs> great player, man. I really, I like what uh, Marty said last call. This guy, he just, he just really, he's, he's a real innovator. But at the end of the day, you need your team. You can't right. win by yourself. He's too good, and he's too fast. He's too strong. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to get a ball to Westbrook. Westbrook's going to have to take the ball out at least. He's going to have to run the offense, and James got to run around at least 10 times a game. It's going to have to happen. It looks too easy. Well, it he's not going to be running defense. around. When he doesn't have a rock, he just stands there. Yep. 
That's what I'm saying. I wish he would do something else and just stand there, at least run around, make a play, fake somebody out, juke somebody or something. Like, this is... Be a decoy. <laughs> yeah, right. Be, yeah, be, yeah. be a decoy is a good way of putting it. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate the call. Leonard in Lancaster, California. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's up, Leonard? Hey, man. What's happening? Hey, man, I think Harden is the most selfish player i ever seen in my life. He will never win a championship, and he is not the... He will never be the best player, ever. No. L- look, it, he's, it, it would be hard to play with him. Do you, don't yeah, you think that, Rob? Oh, I agree it, with it, that. It, yeah, it, it would be. It, it, like, I know Westbrook, and they're good friends. I don't know if that Westbrook's going to say anything. But he's got to be getting frustrated. I don't. I mean, and not, not even being no a bad way. guy, but you got to be. But that was the thing when they put those guys, and we appreciate the call letter. Thank you. When they put them together, Chris, I wasn't convinced – it was going to work, right? I, I was you saying, remember a lot of a lot look, of NBA experts were all over it. They loved yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know where they were doing. Look, I, it is. Look, it's going to work to the tune of fifty three wins oh, yeah. or whatever they end oh, up no, winning. They're going to win, right? Yeah, all that. We know that. But no, it's not going to work. It was championship for them, championship or bust. Because you were close with Chris Paul, right? You were a fifty some odd win team, making the playoffs, going relatively deep with Chris Paul. So this was about winning the championship, and I think they're going to fall short. No doubt. Jeff in Houston, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. What you got? Yes, sir. Representing from Houston, Texas. Got to show off for Harden. Um, I agree with all the other callers. Harden is a great scorer, one of the best shot creators, foul creators. Just kind of put a new aspect to the game with creating his own foul shot. Uh, his own foul shots and then sinking them in at a high percentage rate. Uh, but like the other callers, it can't be done with just him. It's been proven. It's been shown before. I don't know what it is. Every year, they get close with Chris Paul. They got close a couple years ago, Golden State. They add Westbrook. You think, okay, he's a little bit better than Paul. Step up. He could help, but it's always hard in that ISO I don't know what it is. He just doesn't have that clutch in the playoffs. He can do it regular season. He can get the job done. He can score 40. I've been to the games. He's 40, 50 a night. You're enjoying the game. Playoff time, Houston is left short every year. That's the problem. He can't get it done. Nope, that's the problem, Jeff. Uh, appreciate the call. Aaron, in Arizona, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Yeah, I don't think this is a problem with James Harden's style. I mean, he's a big, selfish player, but because he's only shooting 46% from the field. 44. But look at the coach. D'Antoni's tried this style of gameplay for the last 15, 20 years. He's got another player, you could argue, twice in his career that is the best player to never win a ring in Steve Nash. He had him with Sean Marion. He had him with Kobe Bryant. And D'Antoni never even got to the finals. So I don't think this is a problem with James Harden as much as it is. D'Antoni is the best worst coach to ever coach the NBA. And you know what, Aaron? I'm not going to disagree with that at all. At all, because those Phoenix Suns teams, Chris, you remember, they were good. They used to win 60 games, all that. Yeah. But they were never going to win. It didn't. It didn't seem like they were ever going to win a championship playing that way. It was somewhat similar to this. Obviously, you didn't have one guy kind of being a ball hog, but you did have one guy dominating the ball in Steve Nash. Now, he was more of a passer. But he but still D'Antoni, had the ball, right? Yeah, D'Antoni's a one-trick pony. Yep. Period. You look at certain guards who can – they're downhill guards. They're great with the pick and roll. They handle the ball well. They they like to keep it in their hands. They've all excelled under Dan Tony, I mentioned you got Harden, Steve Nash, even guys like Jeremy Lin. His run was under Dan Tony. Yep. Uh, Chris Duhan had his best days under Dan Tony. Like those are types of players he can excel with. Give him anything else. I mean, even the caller mentioned Kobe, Dwight Howard. He's not going to be able to do anything with them. And that's the thing. He hasn't changed. We mentioned Harden not changing. Dan Tony hasn't changed anything. He's trying to fit a square peg into a round hole with Westbrook into this offense in the role he's got him in. And I, I agree with the caller that a lot of this is on Dan Tony. But, Rob, I've said I think Dan Tony, I'm in the minority. I do think he's a Hall of Fame coach because I put him in that group with like a Don Nelson. Remember Nelly, you know, the kind of tricky and the schemes and, 
you know, doing things differently. Of course, never won a championship, but always had pretty good teams. Teams that won a lot of games, were in the hunt, but could never get over the hump. And I think that's kind of where Dan Tony's at. No, I got All you. right. All right, mic drop. No, no, no. I, we, we're up against the break, aren't we? Why does everything got to be a mic drop? I'm just, I don't know. I just drop them a lot. 